Hey everybody, this is Steve, and I once ran out of gas. Okay, that's a lie. I've actually run out of gas two or three times in my life. I can't recall for sure because it's embarrassing, and I've worked really hard to suppress the memory. I mean, have you ever thought about how hard it is to run out of gas in a modern car? For days and days, I saw the light flashing on the dashboard, warning me that the tank was almost empty, and... I just ignored it. I figured I could always take care of the problem later. I mean, I had stuff to do. I had to go to school. I had to go to work. I had to run errands. I figured there was always time to fill up my gas tank later. That is, until my car came to a sputtering, horrifying stop. I had to walk about 30 minutes to the nearest gas station, fill up a container with gas, and then lug it another 30 minutes back to my stranded car. It was a nightmare. Did I mention that I was giving a sweet old professor a ride and that he sat patiently in the car and waited for me until I got back? And as embarrassing as that was, I ran out of gas again after that. At least once, maybe twice. I don't know, like I said, I've blocked out the memories. Point is, I needed to give my car fuel before I could successfully give someone else a ride. Does the same apply in our lives as Christians? Do we need to prioritize our own spiritual health so we can interact with others in a healthy and Christ-centered way? Or is this selfish? After all, the call of the gospel is to love completely and selflessly, to put God and neighbor before myself at all costs. As Jesus said, no one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And of course, the Lord showed us that on the cross. So it seems pretty obvious. Self-care shouldn't be a thing Christians do. No matter how much it hurts us, even if it means sacrificing our lives and everything we own, we shouldn't worry about ourselves. We should just try to take care of others. Or should we? As we covered back in episode 77, each of us needs to realize that we are the first among sinners. Each of us needs a lot of work to develop a spiritually healthy heart and a right relationship with God. Taking time for personal prayer and fasting is a big part of that. But again, I want to push on that question. Is taking time for your own life, whether spiritual or otherwise, selfish? Does that contradict our goal of sacrificing ourselves and everything we have for others? Well, no, for two reasons. And my terrible experience running out of gas can help make this clear. First, when we think about self-care as Christians, we need to remember why we're doing it. People may fear that some kind of self-help is unchristian because it's focused on helping ourselves instead of others. But let's be clear. We need to differentiate between self-care and self-indulgence. Take my car, for example. Stopping for gas is necessary. Changing the oil in my car is necessary. If I don't do these things, my car will stop working and maybe even break down completely. And if that happens, then I won't be able to do anything with the car, no matter how unselfish it is. In order to do anything unselfish with my car, I need to keep the gas tank full. I need to take care of it. But self-indulgence is different. That's more like wanting neon lights, a sweet spoiler, and a loud exhaust that draws attention. These are things my car doesn't need, but are things that I may want to make me feel special. Of course, if I forget to put gas in the car, it doesn't matter how tricked out and awesome my car looks, it still won't run. In order to work, the car needs gas. Not a spoiler. But of course, we're not really talking about cars. There are things that we need to do, as people, to make sure that we have fuel in our tanks. Things that give us the strength and the ability to be available to care for others. Imagine if you needed to pick up your grandma from the airport, and I said, Here, use my car. It's totally out of gas and doesn't run, but it's got a sweet subwoofer system. I think she'll really like the music. Well, that's useless. And just like I need to keep gas in the car so that you can use it, I need to stay fueled in my heart so that I can be available with enough spiritual energy to care for you, my neighbor. That's the why, the purpose we need to keep in mind when thinking about Christian self-care. But even more than this, the second reason self-care is an important part of the Christian life is that it's the example Jesus set for us. Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice for every single human being who ever lived and ever will live. He became human and died on the cross. And he also provided for others in amazing ways, like healing diseases and raising people from the dead. But that's not all he did. He also went off on his own to pray and fast, to fuel up for making sacrifices for others. Actually, that's the first thing Jesus did after his baptism. Jesus took time to be alone with his Father. He took time for private prayer 
and fasting. It wasn't just all public ministry all the time. After St. John baptized him, Jesus didn't immediately get to work healing, helping, and dying for others. He went into the wilderness for 40 days by himself to be with the Father. Was that a selfish move for a guy who has the power to work miracles and save all of humanity from death? Should he have spent those 40 days healing people rather than vacationing in the wilderness? And maybe the way we ask the question is part of the problem, because in pop culture, self-care can have a self-indulgent feel to it. It's not really about taking care of yourself. Instead, it's what Tom and Donna did on Parks and Rec. It's all about treat yourself, which isn't really self-care, it's self-indulgence. Clothes. Treat yourself. Massage. Treat yourself. Fine leather goods. Treat yourself. It's the best day of the year! Sure, it was a little overdone on Parks and Rec, but treating yourself to nice stuff and luxury experiences seems to be how a lot of people approach self-care. It's about bubble baths and facials, retail therapy and nice restaurants. It's not the hard work of getting and staying healthy. Because Jesus wasn't on vacation those 40 days in the wilderness. He wasn't getting massages and exfoliating his face. Though that does seem like a truly great way to treat yourself. No, he was praying and fasting. He was struggling against temptation and communing with God the Father. And this 40-day period wasn't the only time Jesus took to be alone. Before he went to find and call his disciples to follow him, Jesus stayed up the whole night praying. And later, his disciples found themselves in two different situations where they were stuck on a boat in the middle of a dangerous storm. The first time, Jesus just napped on the boat. And the second time, he wasn't even on the boat with his disciples. He had stayed on the shore to pray. In Luke's Gospel account in particular, we find Jesus doing this a lot. Jesus frequently goes off on his own, even when others want his help. For example, in Luke chapter 5, we read that now more than ever, the word about Jesus spread abroad. Many crowds would gather to hear him and to be cured of their diseases, but he would withdraw to deserted places and pray. On their own, all of these situations can seem pretty selfish, but look at what Jesus did after each of these examples. Look at why Jesus spent so much time alone, praying and fasting. After Jesus came back from his 40 days in the wilderness, he taught in synagogues, fulfilled prophecies, and exercised demons. After he napped on the boat, he stood up and made the storm stop immediately. And after he stayed on the shore to pray while his disciples were struggling in another storm, he walked on water and saved them all from drowning. Jesus didn't take time for himself because he was selfish and didn't care about helping others. No, he took time away because he cared about others. He did it so he could in a sense, store up the fuel needed to accomplish these miracles and wonders. Jesus took time to be alone because he was putting first things first. His relationship with the Father came before everything else, even healing the sick and caring for those in need. And by doing so, Jesus showed us how keeping first things first allows us to keep our lives on track. Because if Jesus, the Son of God who rose from the dead, needs to take time to fuel up before helping others, then we, who are ordinary sinners trying to get closer to God, definitely need to as well. So practicing self-care as a Christian isn't selfish. If anything, taking care of ourselves gives us the fuel we need to live as Christians and help others. In other words, Christian self-care can actually be selfless. And it's what Jesus did. So what exactly is Christian self-care? The internet is full of celebrities and social media accounts and self-help books telling us to practice self-care. But not all of these sources offer us good examples of selfless self-care. It's not about emotional or spiritual health, but rather self-indulgence. But if the point of self-care is to give us the resources necessary to dedicate ourselves to God and others, then pampering ourselves doesn't really seem to fit the bill. Instead, it seems like it's just focused on making us feel good, and feeling good only lasts for so long. In the book of Proverbs, we read, He who loves pleasure will become a poor man. And in his epistle to the Galatians, St. Paul says that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So what type of self-care does give us the fuel needed to live as Christians and enter 
the kingdom of God. Well, let's go back to my car story. What does a car need to run? Gas, of course. If we don't fill our cars up with gas, or even worse, if we fill them up with something else, like orange juice or water, our cars will just get stuck in the middle of the road. And the same thing applies to us Christians. We need gas. We need the right type of fuel. We need a source of life. Otherwise, we'll just sputter to a stop like my car did. More times than I'd like to remember. As Jesus told his disciples, without me, you can do nothing. The source of our life, the gas we need in our tanks, is God. He keeps us going. He gives us what we need to live good lives and fulfill his commandments. As St. Paul writes in his epistle to the Philippians, my God will fully satisfy every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So you might be thinking, where do I go to get access to this source of life? How do I practice self-care and fill up my tank with God? Well, this is our life as Christians in the church. It's the life of prayer and fasting and almsgiving, the personal practices that open our hearts to God. And it's the life of our communal prayer and worship, the prayer services and sacraments that lift our lives into the divine life of God. For the Christian, self-care isn't about self-indulgence or excess. It's not about wealth and luxury. It's about communing with God more and more with each passing day. It's about opening ourselves to the reality that the kingdom of God really is at hand. This is far more energizing than a day at the spa or an afternoon of retail therapy. I mean, think of all the saints that offered the shirt off their backs to the naked and needy. Think of all the saints that have worked miracles in the Lord's name. Think of all the saints that have been killed for Christ's sake. Do you think they would have been able to do these things without being grounded in prayer, fasting, almsgiving, and liturgy? Do you think they would have lived such amazing Christian lives if they didn't prioritize Christian self-care? Of course not. If they had tried to do any of these things under their own strength rather than the grace of God, they would have run out of gas, just like my car did. As St. Isaac the Syrian said, Many have performed miracles, and have raised the dead, and done great signs, and they have drawn many to God, but afterwards, these who saved others have fallen into shameful and contemptible passions. And after they had given life to others, they brought death to themselves, and turned and caused those others to sin by the contradiction which was made manifest in their works. In that while they were still sick in their soul, they did not care for their own healing. They let themselves be cast into the sea of the world to heal the souls of others while they themselves were still sick. If we want to live as Christians, then we need Christ at the center of our lives. If we want to share the faith with our friends and neighbors, then we need to cultivate hearts that are pure and faithful. Because, as Christian showed us in episode 34 of The Trench, we can't share what we don't already have. If we want to live and breathe by the grace of God, then we need to live full of God's grace. As long as we try to do things on our own, we will always fall short. We need to turn to God for fuel not just once or twice, and not just when our car starts to stall and die. We have to stop for gas before the lights in our car start warning us that we're running on empty. If we don't, we're gonna end up like me in my car, stalled out on the side of the road with a disappointed passenger and a lot of regret. And one day we may find ourselves too far from a gas station to have any chance of filling up. So let's be the bee and practice selfless self-care. Be the bee and live orthodoxy. Remember to like and subscribe and share. I'll see you all next week. Remember to subscribe to our channel and click on the little bell so you never miss an episode. And share this video with your friends and family as we all make our way to the Lord together. Thanks for watching and God bless you.